Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. Last week we took a look at my mother's cable bill, specifically what she was spending on renting boxes from Comcast. And we also looked at how we can save her a lot of money by switching over to Roku's to get her cable subscription. And I got a lot of people writing in with some other questions. So in this video, we're going to do an audit of her entire bill and see how we're getting charged for different things and whether or not we have some additional savings to be found. So let's get to that. Now, when we look at this bill, this is a bill for my mother's house here in Connecticut. And of course, Comcast is under different rules and regulations in other parts of the United States. So what you see here may not align directly with your bill, but they're largely standardizing the language here across the board. So you can get an idea as to what your bill has and what you might be able to take off of it while still maintaining your service. And I wanted to zero in on this first line because this was the subject of the last video. And here we got rid of all of my mother's cable boxes and switched over to Roku as an alternative. And the nice thing about using one of these partner devices is that they don't charge you a rental fee for that. Now in the last video, a lot of you wrote in to say you could also get rid of the cable modem by buying your own. And the complexity that we have here is that she also has voice service through Comcast. Now you can buy a modem that does internet and voice, but they're rather expensive. And as you'll see a little bit later in the video, I think we might be taking our business elsewhere when this contract ends. So I'm reluctant to make any more investments. So we're gonna keep the modem for the time being, but if we do end up sticking with Comcast, I'm gonna get that out of there as well and get her own equipment into the house. And as you can see here, I've got everything now boxed up. They did finally get us labels for everything and sent over some boxes to send everything back. And the uh, thing that I learned over the course of this is that it was actually worse than I initially thought insofar as how they essentially bamboozled my mom here to get stuff that she didn't need. So if we dial into this premium DVR service add-on, in the last video I told you that they took it off the bill. Well, guess what? They didn't. And the reason they didn't is that she actually had two DVR units on her HD televisions that they apparently sent her when she switched over to this service plan two years ago. She's never even used the DVR function. By the way, there is a cloud DVR feature as part of her current plan, which she's had all along. She never needed the local DVR box to begin with, but this is the kind of upselling that they do when they get you into another contract period with them. And so she's been paying for something that she hasn't needed, and we can't get rid of this charge until they get the DVR back, because although she's spending $10 a month for each box, if the box has DVR functionality, every additional DVR outlet also becomes another monthly charge as it is here. So when she got that second DVR box, that uh, basically triggered this premium DVR $10 fee. So until those boxes get back to them, we can't take this off the bill. And this is an example of some of these nested services that trigger other expenses down the line. And you're going to see another example of that in a minute. Now, another thing I wanted to bring up from the last video is that a lot of you asked about the data cap that Comcast has in place throughout many parts of the country. Where I am in Connecticut, there is no data cap. It remains unlimited. And now that our ISP market is getting much more competitive, which I'll talk about next week, I don't think that cap is coming here at all. But for those of you who are under the cap, if you are watching through one of the Xfinity partner devices on your Xfinity broadband account in your home, they will not ding you for data charges, even if you go over your allocation. The exception, though, as they say here, is for TVE content, which stands for TV Everywhere. And what you'll see on your channel guide is a little icon that says TV Go on it. And on those channels, those will count against the data cap. But if you don't see that TV Go next to the channel, it does not. So a bulk of your cable lineup that you'll see on your channel guide will not count towards your data usage, provided you're not wa watching one of these channels with a TV Go label next to it. So let's move on now to the rest of the bill. Unfortunately, there are not as many opportunities for large savings here. The low-hanging fruit is always the rented equipment, but let's take a look and see what the rest of this stuff actually means. Now you can see here, mom is on a two-year contract that she signed when they delivered all this equipment to her. 
and that contract expires in a few months here from the time I'm shooting this video. So on May 15th, her bill is going to go up $26 unless she does something to re-up. And what they typically do, as you'll see in a minute, is try to get you into a new contract term length that has an early termination fee. So they kind of keep you locked in by offering you a discount across the services that you're using. However, a lot of the fees that we're gonna see on this bill sit outside of the contract so they can continue to rack up your bill even though you're on a fixed price contract for a portion of it. And it's a real racket, I think, the way this works out. Now, right now, this is the service offering. They've dramatically simplified things, but it's also making it harder now to choose what you want to watch. Now, if you look here, we've got basically a good, better, and best kind of service offering here at varying prices. The first one is the Choice 10, which is 10 plus channels for $25 a month. But also look at the fine print here because there is a charge of $28.10 a month for the broadcast fee. And that, of course, sits outside of the contract. Now, what you get on this minimal option isn't much. So I have it right now showing me my local lineup. And you get, of course, QVC and all your local broadcasters, but not much beyond that. But as you can see here, the middle tier gets a lot more, except that middle tier also costs a lot more. So check it out. Uh, not only do you pay $60 a month plus the $28.10 for the broadcast fee, but you're also going to get hit with an $18.10 regional sports fee. And both of those charges currently show up on mom's bill outside of the contract. So these service fees have been incrementally increased over the course of her two-year relationship on this particular agreement. Now, in fairness to Comcast, what happens here is that broadcast TV stations charge Comcast to carry the network on Comcast cable system. And so what Comcast is doing is negotiating what that is going to cost to carry the station, and then they're putting those costs into the fee. So I honestly don't think they're taking much of that for themselves, but it just shows you how broken everything is right now, especially when you can put an antenna up on your roof and get these broadcast television stations for free. And the reason why Comcast has to fight it out is because if they don't come to an agreement, they pull the network off of Comcast's cable system and that, of course, becomes an issue because then people start to wonder, is it worth paying Comcast for this any longer? So what they do is create a fee, put it into the fee, charge whatever they have to for that, and keep the network on their cable system. And the reason why the broadcasters are doing this is because most of their revenue now comes from these retransmission fees. You can see this chart here from the Pew Research Center, which indicates that we're probably in about... 12 to 13 or 14 billion dollars a year at this point in revenues from these cable subscription fees. And by the way, this is something that is also part of YouTube TV and these other internet streaming services. If they're carrying broadcasters, they are likely having to pay those broadcasters to carry those networks. Now, what about the regional sports fee? My mother watches no sports at all, but she's paying $18 a month for regional sports channels. Well, you can see what Comcast explanation is of that here. This is actually very similar to what they're dealing with broadcasters on in that these regional sports networks are charging Comcast and threatening to pull their network off of Comcast if they don't get enough money to carry it. And there's really no way around this fee at the moment because one of the things that I looked at was maybe going with the minimal TV tier for mom's TV watching and see if I can add on some of the channels that she wants to watch. Unfortunately, there's no way to do that. So what you can do is sign up for that basic $25 a month plan and then add on these packages of channels to the mix. Now, my mother does like to watch cable news. I certainly don't anymore, but she does. And in order to get cable news, she has to subscribe to sports as well to get it. And that would add $30 to the $25 she's already spending. And subscribing to news and sports will also trigger the regional sports fee on top of that $30. 
and there is simply no way to get news without paying for sports and the sports fee. So now that we know the lay of the land on TV services, let's take a look and see what her renewal might look like if she decides to stick with them. Now I've enabled the term contract uh, option here so we can see what their best offer is at the time I'm shooting this video. And what I did is I moved her from the gigabit internet that they oversold her on over to this 800 megabit per second plan. As you can see, I can't go lower because to go lower gets us out of the contract discount. So this is the best I can do. Incidentally, they are telling you only downstream speeds here, not upstream. Uh, but this plan, I believe, comes with a 25 megabit upstream, whereas the 400 is only 10 upstream, and I think these two are five. So again, not everything is being disclosed here. Uh, so I will save her a little bit here by going off the gigabit plan that she was on before. They really want you to sign up for their mobile phone service. You'll maybe get some other discounts there if you do that. What Comcast is after here is to offer a whole bunch of different stuff in the hopes that you keep at least one thing with them and maybe they can try to upsell you on some other services when you bundle all these different things together. And that's one of the strengths they have as a big company is that they can offer bundles that their competitors don't offer. Now, if we go over the TV option here, you can see that because we have the term length enabled here, our only option is to go into the ultimate plan here. If we were to go to the mid plan, which honestly is what is fine enough for her, it's going to cost $27 more per month. We don't have an option to go lower on the TV. But either way, that regional sports fee and the broadcast fee is part of this. And again, that sits outside of this contract agreement, so they can increase that anytime they want. And my statement earlier about them not keeping much of it is an assumption. We really don't know if they keep you know, all of it or some of it or give all of it to the broadcaster. It's just not transparent to anyone and they're not required to disclose it either. So there you go. That's the TV option. That's all we can do. And then home phone is in here, except that they don't tell you what it costs until you scroll down to the bottom here and pull up the uh, list of things that you have on the account. So let's do that now and see what we're looking at. Now, right now, they haven't taken the uh, thing off for all the boxes yet. So I'll give you a grand total and compare it to what she's currently paying when we get to the end of the calculation here. So as you can see, the cost here is $197 a month for the internet and TV, but we're gonna get $40 of that knocked off because we're combining multiple products together. Additionally, uh, there's a term contract discount of $47 per month. Now remember, those fees for regional sports and broadcast are mandatory and will go up over this contract length, but the service itself will be what this is, provided she does something before the end of the term. And this term, unlike her current one, is only for a year, so she's got to stay on top of it, otherwise her bill will go up by $47 a month once the agreement ends. Now, as far as voice service is concerned, they say that's going to cost us about $30 a month. Unfortunately, though, given how this deal structure is working on their website, I can't actually remove the voice plan from the mix here. Uh, so what it will do is tell me that this may be part of a deal and you can't undo voice if you're trying to set up the deal the way we are here. So it looks like we're stuck with voice whether we want it or not. Now we're going to get rid of all of these TV boxes here, so we're going to see an elimination of uh, all six of these $10 charges. And what I'm also going to do is calculate the cost of getting rid of the cable modem as well. So if I did my math correctly here, she will be paying $186.20 pre-tax on this new plan compared to $181.19, which is what she would be paying if we got rid of the router and the five TV boxes and DVR charge. Now, a lot of you say, well, why not just cut the cord and look at YouTube TV, which is a very popular option right now. And it's popular because it offers all of the local networks that you have in your region, plus a good selection of cable channels, most of which my mom would like to watch. And I think the pricing is a little better on the TV side here. And another new development in my area is that Comcast is not the only game in town. So Frontier, the formerly bankrupt phone company, managed to pull themselves out of bankruptcy and run a whole bunch of fiber all over the place, including in my neck of the woods. 
And if I were to combine Frontier's fiber and voice service with YouTube TV, the cost is about $140 a month with no equipment charges necessary to get us there either. Now, the only thing to keep in mind about YouTube TV is that its cost has gone up significantly since it was introduced not all that long ago. So it began life as a $35 per month service. Now it is $65. And the last cost increase, if I'm not mistaken, took place in 2020. So we might be due for another one at some point because I would imagine these broadcasters are really sticking it to Google and YouTube to get some more money out of them like they've been getting out of Comcast and Comcast customers over the years. But right now, it looks as though the Frontier and YouTube TV option is more affordable for my mother and presumably the quality of the connection might be better as well because it is a fiber optic symmetrical connection. So what I would put her on is the lowest cost option here, which is the Fiber 500. That is half a gigabit, 500 megabits per second, both up and down. That upstream is significantly faster than even the gigabit Comcast offering, which only goes at the moment up at 35 megabits per second, if I'm not mistaken. So she'll get a much better upstream for doing FaceTime calls with the kids and everything here. And what's nice about this is that she gets the router as part of the deal for no added cost. There is a $50 installation charge, but that's pretty minimal, I think, given the overall cost savings. We do have to pay extra for the phone service so we can port her number over. And then, of course, the YouTube TV on top of that. But to get a reliable fiber optic connection for that little money, I think, is a much better deal than what Comcast is offering. And altogether, it's a lot less expensive at this point in time to switch to Frontier versus sticking with Comcast right now. And this is what's been great about competition. And I'll talk more about this next week. We're starting to see now that these monopolistic practices of charging you whatever they feel like charging you for boxes and rentals and all this other garbage is going away soon because their competitors are not gonna do that. And they're going to offer service that is relatively competitive, if not better, than what Comcast is offering. And that's something that I think is going to be shaking up this marketplace quite a bit. Now, if you want to research everything Comcast has to offer, they do publish rate cards, which will give you everything that they offer in your area. So you can calculate all this stuff out yourself. And if you go to lon.tv slash Comcast rate card while you're logged into your Comcast account, it'll pull down the rate card for your area. And if you're curious what internet cost by itself, you can see here that in my area, if I just had internet and nothing else, their gigabit is $112 a month. That 800 megabit plan is $107 a month. The fast is a 102 bucks a month, which I think was the 400 megabit plan. And you can see that they are significantly more expensive if you're not bundling other things together versus these fiber optic plans that are coming into many parts of the United States, especially where I am. And in addition to Frontier, we're getting another company called Go NetSpeed, which is a smaller ISP that is also starting to elbow their way into the marketplace here. And I'll talk more about this next week, but this is what competition is doing. And I can't imagine Comcast leaving their prices this high anymore, especially when fiber optic providers, especially large ones with similar infrastructure, sell much better offerings for far less money. So that's gonna do it for this audit of my mother's cable bill. This is something we should all be doing right now, not only for our parents and loved ones, but for ourselves as well, because there are many more choices out there now. We're gonna talk about some of those choices next week. My area went from a place with zero choice to one where we've got multiple choices now, and I'm quite happy about that, and things are getting better for consumers at the same time. Go figure. Now, this week's video is being brought to you by all of you, and I want to thank some super chatters and super thankers who contributed to the channel over the last week. They include Keith Robinson, Jero101V, and Ed Crom. We also got some new supporters here on the channel, including Henry Heikalia, I hope I got your name correct there, who made a contribution via my donor box page. We also have Todd Holter and Budley, who signed up to support the channel via the YouTube membership program. And we got two new subscribers on Floatplane, Brett Destroyer and Scion. And I want to thank everyone who contributed this week and everyone who's been contributing on an ongoing basis and all of you who watch on a regular basis too because all of those things equal channel growth. And if you want to support the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv support 
and make a monthly or a one-time contribution through my donor box page, which is the best way to do it. You can also sign up though here on YouTube under their membership program and on Floatplane and Patreon if you wish as well. We have other channels you can watch me on, including my extras channel where I've got supplementary content and unboxings. And then of course, we've got a lot of my product reviews up on Amazon at lon.tv slash Amazon shop, where you can see most of my stuff ad free. And that is gonna do it for this one. Let me know again what you thought down in the comments below. I'd love to keep coming back to this topic as so many of you are interested in it. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the lon.tv supporters including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.